Hello and welcome to Check It Out at EVPL, a podcast from your local library. I'm your host, Ellen. And I'm your other host, Aaron. So today we are going to be talking about things that are not books. <laughs> not book things at the library. Let's start with your favorite. So I'm a huge fan of Hoopla, which is one of our digital services. You can download that on most tablets, smartphones, and also uh, look at it through your PC or Mac. And uh, what they offer is different uh, books, audiobooks, movies, CDs, and the main reason I'm talking about it is our graphic novels. We have a really great graphic novels collection here at EVPL, but the problem is, uh, especially in the middle of trying to read like a 12 volume run of Why the Last Man, volume six could be checked out when you're ready to go for volume six. So with Hoopla, one of the great things about it is that you can actually read books or graphic novels and not have to wait for anyone to check those back in. Yeah, that definitely is a big perk of using Hoopla, especially with our other online applications, which are also great to use overdrive flash libby comics plus those are both great resources that you can also get comics from but i love that with hoopla you don't have to wait for someone else to return a copy you can just pick it up and go it's always great knowing that you don't have to you start a new series and you've got like 15 volumes ahead of you you know that you won't have to potentially pause just to wait for a certain volume to be returned Another great thing about Hoopla is that it has an Amazon Fire app, which some of our other services don't offer, so it can be harder to put things onto your Fire tablet. We also have Campy, which is fairly new. I think we added that within the last uh, several months. And uh, if you take a cursory glance at it, you're going to walk away with the assumption that it's just mostly documentaries and uh, educational uh, films and whatnot. But you'll be surprised, like, depth of their catalog. What were some of the ones you saw, Ellen? Definitely What We Do in the Shadows stands out. That's how I was able to see that movie for the first time, was through the canopy option. And uh, just some of the ones I've seen that I'm fans of, uh, they have Zodiac and the, <laughs> the the schlocky core movie from 2003, as well as Willard from the 70s. So there's definitely a wide variety there, other than just your documentaries and you know, more more things there if you don't want to just sit there and learn stuff. Yeah, the one on my watch list right now is The Astro Zombies, which looks <laughs> terribly campy and wonderful and awkward and has to do with alien zombies and CIA agents. And it looks like a really kind of terrible in a good way horror film. That would be a nice pairing with like a UFO documentary you can find on campy as well. We also have physical things that you can get from the library that are not books. Uh, we have recently started a library of things and right now we feature a couple of musical instruments. You can borrow a ukulele or you can borrow a rollout piano. I kind of like the idea of us having a grand piano that you do have to come and pick up and transport yourself but that was kind of shot down. And they're cowards for that I know <laughs> but uh, you know rollout piano fairly close thing. Uh, it's definitely easier to transport and uh, just like the name suggests, it's a pad you roll out and the keys actually do depress. So you kind of give that sensation like you're playing piano. And of course, ukulele. So if you ever want to sit on your porch and strum out a ditty, you can do that and borrow one for upwards of three weeks. I love the fact that we have ukuleles. I actually am a self-taught ukulele player. So I think it's a great option to kind of offer that so people can try it out and get to know how those instruments work without having the pressure of a immediately buying one and immediately needing to know everything. It kind of gives you a chance to explore and see how everything goes. And of course, we do have supplemental resources you can borrow along with these instruments to kind of start your journey and learning uh, new musical instruments. Oh yeah. Did you know that we have books of sheet music? Mostly here at Central. Yes, I do. I looked it up previously as well. Uh, we do offer lots of books on piano sheet music. You can definitely find several if you are uh, looking to play some of your favorite classics. Continuing to talk about the library of things, we are actually starting to add new collections every month. Starting in September, we will be adding the Yard Games collection. I am so excited for the Yard Games! I know that we're going to have like big uh, Django set. Mm -hmm. um, what other things? I believe we are also getting Cornhole and Giant Checkers might be on that list. Nice. Um. Viking chess, Viking something. Uh, we have the cornhole. 
Um, we have a off-brand version of Spike Ball. Okay. Bocce Ball? Pickleball. Pickleball. That's way more than you would think we would have at that mere suggestion. In October, we will have bird backpacks, and that will be a uh, collection of items you can use for bird watching. I do want to circle back to the games, though. Yeah. One thing I'm really excited about with the games, um, it, it makes me think a lot of when all my friends were having graduation parties and how we all loaned each other the same set of cornhole that one person had because that was the only thing we had to do. So I really like the idea that this gives a lot more options to people who may be planning parties and want some fun games. Yes, and I love Cornell personally. It's probably my favorite yard game out there. There's also nothing more of a crowd pleaser than having that giant Jenga set. Yes. Um, you'll get a lot of people wanting to play with that. Okay, so continuing on, November we will have yarn crafts. Uh, so that will include things like knitting, knitting needles, knitting. Uh, croquet hooks. See, I got croquet down, but knitting? Croquet is not a yarn craft. Croquet hooks. Croquet hooks are not a thing. They're not a thing. I'm. They're... Croquet is a yard game. We Again, may have that in our yard game collection. We've established that I am so good at blindly reading the script and not questioning anything. Crochet hooks we crochet. will probably have that in our crochet yarn hooks. collection thank you and that is the max cap of my knowledge on yarn in december we will have cake pans and i know that we're going to be featuring not just traditional cake pans but we have a darth vader head and we're planning on adding other fun characters from different franchises so that could be something that you can use to bake your kid uh you know their favorite character <laughs> do you have a favorite among any of those collections i'm really interested in the birding backpack i've always kind of wanted to go into bird watching definitely a serene activity i think it's really cool especially in october when we're right on the cusp of it getting too cold for a lot of outdoor activities i think it's a perfect time to take advantage of that i definitely tried to get into bird watching once and it turns out i am not patient <laughs> which is a skill you need for watching birds. Yeah, and I'll, I'll bring my phone along, so maybe I can last quite some time. But yeah, I do realize it's kind of like on those nature shows when you see all this fantastic footage, and then you realize when you look up like behind the scenes that a lot of those people are there for sometimes days just to get the right picture. But you know, if you bring your phone with you, you can access Hoopla and download some free comics from the library. Um, as well as Libby, listen to an audiobook. Watch a movie on campy while you look for birds with your peripheral. I mean, we're just supplying you the tools. You just choose how you want to use them. Joking aside, they're all great programs. Absolutely. And we are, uh, as for now, like December is the last month we have planned for the Library of Things. However, we are in the process of playing out for each subsequent month. So be on the lookout for that. We're really excited about it and we hope you guys will be too. Aside from just things that you can borrow, the library also has a lot of programs. Aaron, do you want to talk about any of those? Absolutely. One of our biggest programs uh, every summer is the Summer Reading Program. Yes. This year the theme was... Reading is delicious. Yes, it was. Oh. And that's why we were all walking around with shirts with uh, anthropomorphic fruit. Yes. Uh, it was. Uh, it's always a fun thing, especially when we see people bringing their kids and the kids are excited to really like dive into all the books. Okay, so you told me the staff total for how many minutes read. Do you still have that number? It was 96,500 minutes read by just the staff alone. When you look at the public side of things, the total number of minutes logged by teens and adults, 772,978 minutes were spent reading this summer. We officially start the program in May, correct? Yes, I believe right towards the end of May and it goes through July. Okay. That is a total of 307.62 days. So right on, Vanderberg. Good job, everyone. So uh, other programs we've been hosting the last couple of months, uh, we recently restarted uh, showing movies at the library. Oh my gosh, the outdoor movies in the summer are so much fun. And you get that uh, crisp smell of popcorn just wafting under your nostril. Yeah. It's the ultimate summer experience. And the interactive movies that we run for kids. Have you ever been to one of those? No, I haven't. So I got to help set up the interactive Lego movie and everyone got a goodie bag. And one of the things included was a fake mustache. 
And so it was a lot of fun getting to set those up and then seeing kids run around after the movie with all their little props was spectacular. Cool. And if you're not into uh, stuff uh, for young kids, uh, I know recently we started having video game nights here after school. We usually set up, uh, I believe, Smash Brothers and Mario Kart over in the former cafe area uh, over in the teen center. So if you're uh, off school, you don't have anything going on, come on down and play some games. We're definitely focusing a lot more on bringing in new teen activities too. I know some locations do personal button making so you can have some cool pins. In the past, we've done baking programs to teach teens how to cook things from scratch. And I believe uh, Marcella is still hosting some videos on the Facebook page where she shows uh, different things you can cook. We also had some uh, take-home cook kits. Don't know if that's something we're planning on doing again, but that's something you keep an eye out for. Those are really cool too because you can watch the video that corresponds with it at home and you can take your time to like pause it and make sure you're doing things correctly and then resume and you're not rushed by anyone else. Going at your own pace. That's what we try to create with some of the programs. You won't be too pushy or anything of that sort. Any other programs you can think of? Definitely looking more at the kids. There is a thousand books before kindergarten. Oh yeah, that's correct. I was a big reader my whole life because my parents read to me a lot, and I like that this kind of puts initiative on the kids because they get rewarded when they read with their parents. Because when you hit certain milestones in the program, you get a physical patch that you can put on, like a backpack or a coat. And see, kids love rewards. So uh, if you have a kid who's a little timid about reading, uh, you know, this might be a good Kickstarter for them. Those patches are really cool, too. I, I honestly wish that I could participate in this because they have such cool like space theme so there's a rocket ship one and there's an astronaut one and they're very fun you know in addition to all of our digital programming we do have like tech drop-ins now which so you can just swing by and like talk to someone about how to set up videos on your phone how to download your library podcast Abs- and things like that absolutely and we do field a lot of different tech questions we actually had someone bring in their tv one time um we can't promise anything on the tvs but when it comes to our own apps and using them on your smartphones or tablets uh we are definitely a reliable resource on that i definitely love helping with the apps it's something that i always tell people like if you have any issues please bring it back please let me show you how this works just like let me set up your devices for you please let me like help you enter this new world and discover it Yes, you have the technology there in your pocket. Let me help you use it. I want to mention real briefly that we do have these things called Playways. Um, So if you ever see that come up on your search on evpl.orgs and you're wondering what the hey is that, well, Playway is a device that has the one book and one book only. And it's a uh, thing that takes, uh, I think, AAA batteries. And uh, you just plug in your headphones and you listen to your book. When you're done, you bring it back. And we are still getting uh, newer books in that form. Um, So if you're wanting to listen to audiobooks but you don't have a cd player and you're still not too comfortable with hoopla or um libby yet on your smartphone you come down and see if some of your favorite books are available in that form probably some of your favorite books will be there i know we have a ton of james patterson playaways which can basically keep you busy forever yes there's no exaggeration there the end of time will come and go and james patterson books will still keep playing he just keeps writing more he is in every section of this library as i'm shelving books in read uh in nonfiction, in ya and probably like has a column in our local newspaper that i'm not aware of he just keeps churning out stuff that would not surprise me you can find the uh playways in the popular material center i also like this playway views for kids where it's like interactive storybook kind of learning games and they have them separated out by age so it will say like right on the front which age or or grade level they're intended for. I think those are really cool. The Playway views are very cool and they are part of the 100 item limit, correct? Yes. So that basically means that if you've got a kid you need to keep busy and preoccupied for a while, you can definitely come by and get several of those at once. Of course, we've talked about physical DVDs. We do have uh, an exorbitant amount here. We do get new copies, new bestsellers as well. I know one thing that people kind of get thrown off with is we will have DVDs that are labeled new and then DVDs that are labeled
label bestseller. Just keep in mind that the bestseller express, you only have seven days for those new, you have 21 days. Ah, I'm going into a robotic salesman. Yeah, yeah you're very I'm, rambly right now. I am. And of course, we've still got plenty of classics too. I am fond of uh, checking out the horror section whenever I get a few minutes. You'll be surprised. We have all of your classics, all of your B-movie classics. So definitely check that out. What's your favorite movie at the library? I would have to go with, can't remember the last one I rented. The last one you rented is just always your favorite? Yeah, well, yeah. Because uh, I haven't borrowed something for a while. I would say um, one of my favorite movies I watched recently, Night of the Scarecrow, which was a 1970s TV movie that apparently no other DVD copy or Blu-ray exists. And we have a copy of it for some reason. And uh, it is a poorly made, poorly acted, poorly scripted horror movie. And I loved every second of it. Does it have any of those really awkward zoom-ins? That's always my favorite thing in bad horror movies. Oh, absolutely. There's like a questionable vision based metaphors that they go for. They go out with a plum and you just can only applaud it. So what about you? What have you been checking out at the library recently? I haven't checked this out recently, but every time I see it on the shelf, it makes me happy that we have a copy. Have you heard of the movie She's the Man with Amanda Bynes? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, that is seriously one of my favorite movies because it is a modern interpretation of Twelfth Night. By Shakespeare. So good. And it's a soccer movie. And soccer movies are always a good time. I have not watched a lot of soccer movies. I'm familiar with Bennett like Beckham, but mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah, there aren't a ton of movies about soccer, but all the ones out there are just super fun. Unless Bennett like Beckham isn't fun. I have not seen Bennett. I think it's a fun movie. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what about books wise? Where are you reading? I am reading Maureen Johnson's latest Stevie Bell mystery. It is a standalone book. She also has a trilogy that introduces is the character. This newest one is called The Box in the Woods, and it is about a teenage detective who goes to a creepy summer camp where a bunch of teenagers were murdered in the, I think in the 70s. If you do some historical research in the 70s, you'll see a lot of cases where people probably thought that the world was going to end that decade. That's why a lot of horror movies and horror novels kind of source out that era. Um, That's when the satanic panic happened, wasn't it? Yeah, like okay. 70s to 80s, yeah. So I am personally reading something from our science fiction collection. I've been trying to randomly go through and pick up some books without really researching it. It's called Through Wolf's Eyes, and it's part of the Firekeeper saga from last name Linquist. And it's a pretty good uh, medieval fantasy novel so far. I thought you said it was sci-fi. Well, see, that's the thing. We do have fantasy books in sci-fi. Ah, okay. Yeah. That's the old problematic thing they do with genres where they just kind of yeah. don't label them correctly. Other things you can check out that are not books... As mentioned, we do have audiobooks, and I listened. I actually got a whole bunch of playaways one time and just spent like three weeks listening to them nonstop. Got through a bunch of great nonfiction books, one being Killers of the Flower Moon. I hear uh, good things about that one. Oh, it's fantastic. And they are in the midst of turning that into a movie starring Leonardo DiCaprio and directed by uh, Martin Scorsese. Lots of uh, top tier talent there. I'm pitching a movie now for you guys to go watch. <laughs> Apparently. Do you remember what your first experience with audiobooks was? Yeah, it was actually listening to a um, book we read for the book club, uh, This Eye of Paradise by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And that was uh, one of those things where I was going to be contributing a lot to our reading group and I was having a hard time finding time to just sit down and read. And I was able to listen to that book through Hoopla. So I remember being about 10 years old and my mother had a copy of The Hobbit on cassette tape. And cassette tapes were already old news. And this particular one was horrible. 10 years old or so, sitting in the car on like a long trip and my mother is trying to insist to me that The Hobbit is this great book. And all I hear is kind of this noise. I was, I refused audiobooks for the longest time. That's why I just last year started really listening to them. So I, for some reason, decided to not have that in my life for a little while. Yeah, audiobooks are definitely a gift to humanity. They really are. And you get a really good narrator. Mm -hmm. It just makes all the hours slip by. Have you ever listened to the Golden Compass audiobook? No, I haven't. It is amazing. It is a full cast production, so all the characters have different voice actors. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I love those, too, where uh, they uh, either get someone who's a talented voice actor and they actually do voices for all the characters, or mm -hmm. you just get, like, multiple actors to do it. 
Yeah. There was one I listened to, uh, Queen Sugar. Yes. And I listened to that one recently, and it was a very talented uh, VO person who would actually do voices for all the characters, so you can definitely distinguish them. One of my favorite audiobooks, the trilogy switches performers halfway through. So the first book is a full cast performance, and then the second and third book are just the one person doing voices, and she does way different voices than everything in the first book. I don't know. There's something charming about it, though. I really like it. Oh, yeah. Makes you wonder what happened behind the scenes to result in that. Um, Oh, I just remembered. We have anime. We have lots. Oh, my gosh. We have anime. anime. Please, please come take our anime and give it back. But if you are um, not interested in checking out some of the subscription services, we have a lot of classic animes. And uh, I think I would say, like, I grew up on, like, Dragon Ball Z. Oh, yeah. um, Yu Hakusho. Like, we've got all those. Like, if you were part of that tsunami fad from, like, the late 90s early 2000s we got you covered also in case it was not clear the library is full of nerds yes so come talk to us about anime please please do or else i'll have to um pitch in something else about the library services distract me keep me oh no from this curse yes no more pitching things uh, i guess we can wrap up i never wrote an outro script that's a thing i did not do yeah i, I, don't, I wouldn't really worry about it i will mm. just be like hey thanks for sticking with us till the end yeah. you guys are awesome gold stars all around thanks for running down this horrible road with us yes and if this somehow gets out in the public we are so sorry hey i think we are a delight i think we are too i think this was for a very first episode i think this was fine maybe like exuberant in some just based on being in this recording at this moment i would say this is like two and a half star recording so like decent decent start okay maybe three and a half star are we basing that off of four or five stars five stars Okay. Just, you know, right in the middle there. Right in the middle, yes. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and sign off then. Awesome. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, me. Couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> thank you. And, uh, and thank you for the poor souls who listened to this. Okay. Okay, okay we're done. Thank you guys for sticking with us through this first episode. We are sure that it will change over time. Thank you, Aaron, for recording with me. Thank you for having me. And And thank thank you to our producer. Thank you, Christina. Uh, You are a light in the darkness. All right. Well, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And don't forget to check it out next time with EVPL.